Okay, so this is what the question is saying. Um, it says the resonant frequency of an RLC series of circuit. Let me draw the circuit so that uh, we have something concrete to work with. I have, um, and this is, uh, well, it's talking about resonant frequency. So I'm going to assume it's dealing with a driven AC circuit, and also because of the chapter it's in. <laughs> um, so for a driven AC circuit, I'm assuming there's an applied voltage uh, that's uh, a function of time. So in a cosine of omega t. And uh, by the way, so I'm going to try giving this a treatment using only the real valued functions and real valued phasors. Um, it, because I've done the other question using complex exponentials and complex impedances. So RLC series or circuit. I need the three circuit elements in series. I need the register, I need the inductor, and I need a capacitor in series. And you are given some pieces of information. You are given, oh, well, you're not given the resistance, but I think that's fine. Uh, you are given the inductance, L, and you are being asked for the capacitance. And you are told what the resonant frequency of the circuit is. So this is, uh, let me label that F naught. And from this, we can get a uh, resonant angular frequency. So resonant angular frequency would be 2 pi times the resonant frequency. So um, the kind of the expression either in terms of frequency or angular frequency. Angular frequency tends to be easier for expressing formulas and whatnot. And frequency tends to be more uh, natural. Uh, a lot of us have a better intuition for cycles per second, hertz, than radians per second, which would give the angular frequency. So, but we can always use this relationship to switch back and forth between the two. When it gives you the resonant frequency, you can certainly look up the formula in the textbook. And, and I think uh, to some degree, that's fine. Uh, the amount of time we have to spend with AC circuits, um, if you want to reduce it to a set of formulas you memorize, acknowledging that that's not the best way, I don't have strong objections to raise. Um, but let me try to approach this from a more conceptual sense. So what we mean when we say something is uh, resonant uh, or yeah, resonance, uh, we are looking at some kind of uh, maximization. So on the resonant frequency, some quantity is being maximized. Uh, it could be amount of power that's dissipated in the circuit. Or if you're thinking in terms of a fixed amount of voltage being applied, it, the natural thing to be maximizing or depending on context, minimizing. Uh, so it's maximize or extremize uh, current. So if you, uh, recall back to Ohm's law, which says that uh, amount of current through a circuit is the voltage divided by resistance. This uh, mostly holds. The difference being when you are dealing with the um, when you are dealing with AC quantities, you are dealing with these components that have impedances. What you have to think about is uh, these uh, impedance or the reactance of these quantities expressed in terms of um, expressed in terms as a phasor. So uh, the as far as the magnitude of the reactance go, you might remember this formula: reactance of inductor is angular frequency of the driving signal times the inductance. The reactance of a capacitor is um, it's one over angular frequency of the driving signal times the capacitance. And when these, when these are expressed on a phasor diagram, I hope you remember their distinct uh, orientation. They point in different directions. 
the inductive reactance points in the plus 90 degree direction and the capacitive reactance points in the minus 90 degree direction. And there are meanings that we associate with that. So when we are trying to figure out uh, what is the amplitude of the current through a driven AC circuit, what we are looking at is the, the that amplitude and using absolute value symbol as a familiar thing that expressed that idea with a regard to phase is the, um, the voltage amplitude divided by some kind of a magnitude of the total impedance. And finally, when you are figuring out the total impedance, what you do is you add these quantities that are expressed in phasor diagram. So the resistance or the reactance of a register or the impedance of a register is expressed as an arrow pointed in the positive x axis. The the um, the, the the reactance of the inductor is along this uh, positive y-axis. The reactance of the capacitor is in the negative uh, y-axis. And when you are looking at the, when you are looking at the total, um, when you are <laughs> looking at the um, total impedance of all three elements connected in series, what you are doing is you are doing a vector sum. You are doing a sum of the resistance plus the impedance of uh, the reactance of the inductor plus the reactance of the capacitor. And wherever this finally ends up at, that's the quantity that we would express as the total impedance. And we can take the magnitude here, the length of this arrow on the phasor diagram would indicate the uh, the magnitude of the total impedance. So through this kind of longish explanation, um, where we arrive with it at is if you are trying to maximize the current, what we want to do is we want to minimize the total impedance. So as you look at this diagram geometrically, what you need to do in order to minimize the total impedance. So with the resistive portion, there's nothing you can do about that. Once the resistance is in your circuit, there's nothing that can balance it out and cancel it out, at least not in a passive circuit. Uh, there's some interesting things you can do with the active circuits. So resistance, you just leave it be. There's nothing you can do about it. So I'm not going to do anything about it. As you look at this geometric diagram, I hope you notice something interesting, that the reactance of an inductor points in the opposite direction from the reactance of a capacitor. So there's a possibility of these two contributions canceling each other out so that the total impedance just goes, is equal to R. So for resonance, the condition you want is you want the total impedance to be equal to the resistance of the register alone. And you would achieve this by enforcing, okay, I want the reactance of the inductor, which um, is in different direction from reactance of capacitor uh, to be equal in magnitude to each other, so that these two different contributions to the total phasor of the impedance will cancel out. So this is the condition. Uh, omega L is equal to 1 over omega C. And if you're looking up formulas, uh, this or the uh, result based on this, um, so you solve this for omega. And when you finish doing that, I'm just going to do that in my head. Omega is equal to 1 over square root of LC. Um, that's uh, your answer for the angular frequency that uh, that matches the resonance condition. So, um, oh, so what I have to do is I, I actually have to solve for 
capacitance since the thing is asking for capacitance. So let me actually solve this for capacitance instead. Then uh, doing it in my head, the capacitance should be equal to um, one over omega squared L. So that's it. Uh, let me do this on Ulfram alpha so that I can have Ulfram alpha work out the unit. It's a kind of an um, interesting thing in when you're dealing with the circuits that um, circuits and uh, actually most of electromagnetism, the, the units can get a little bit gnarly, but um, the amazing thing there is they also kind <laughs> of magically work out. So, okay, so I'm in Ulfram alpha. Let me just type the, in this information. So one over. I want the natural fre uh, angular frequency of oscillation. So it's two pi times, oh wait, I need extra parenthesis, uh, five E three hertz square, that's omega square, times the, the inductance, 7.5 milli Henry. And let me input it and see what kind of unit choices I get. So after Wolfram alpha, works it out the unit choices i get ah there it is so it gives a bunch of other units like this is in terms of the basic si unit it also um, from alpha because it's aware of unit it knows that these combine into a unit of farad so a uh, unit of mark microfarad is one of the choices it gives 0 0.135 that ought to be the answer 0 0.135 so that's it. Um, it uh, so, you know, with these AC circuit questions, I try to avoid asking um, too complicated questions because, uh, again, the, the level of depth you can get into with AC circuits is quite deep. Uh, there's a lot of time we can spend, and a circuit class would uh, spend much more time than we are spending. Um, so here, really, my goal is that for those of you who might be in uh, majoring in either electrical engineering or physics or other related fields where you do have to deal with the circuits, that when you see things like AC circuits, which are very common, that it, would, it wouldn't be your first time seeing it.